so today we are here for a very much requested video. Today's video is going to be an explanation slash workout video of some glute programming. Before I get started in this video, because I always get questions on lip color and because I just got this in the mail today and I've been really anxious about trying it, this has nothing to do with fitness, sorry. But I'm wearing the Kylie Lip Kit in the color Malibu. I got the full kit, so I got the lip liner and the lipstick. Just brief review, the formula of the lipstick, the liquid lipstick, is it's very dry, so I do have some of the NYX cookie butter gloss over it. The formula is very dry. The formula is also very dark compared to what it looked like online. I actually prefer just the lip liner. I do have a little bit of both on right now, um, but I did use just primarily the lip liner, a few dabs of the liquid lip, and then a light smattering of the cookie butter gloss over top. So since people always ask about lip color and since those are like a really hot topic right now, figured I would throw that in. Anyway, on to the glute workout. The actual workout itself will have a voiceover with it, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things before moving into that. So here we go. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about my current glute training and part of why I wanted to do this video is to explain some of those questions. I really prefer informational videos, sit down videos. I like it when I learn something from a video and I always hope to teach you guys something. I am a quad dominant lifter, so glute growth has always been a struggle for me and I really feel like this programming cycle, uh, the one that I just completed and the one that I'm currently on, are really, really helping with glute activation and actually growing my glutes, which is something that I need to do in order to earn my pro card on stage next time. Uh, regardless of if you're a competitor in bodybuilding, whether you're a power lifter, whether you're a weight lifter, whether you're just you know a general lifestyle lifter, I hope that there's always something that you can take from my channel and learn from it. So today we are gonna talk about the glutes. I am currently focusing on a glute hypertrophy program, AKA muscle growth, hypertrophy is muscle growth, uh, in mindful glute contraction. So I aim to go as heavy as I can on the movements while still getting maximal glute contraction. If you try to push too heavy, or if I were, for example, doing a strength cycle like I've done in the past, for example, a squat strength cycle, where I'm trying to push a new one rep max. Um, when you, If you try to push too heavy on a movement, your dominant and stronger muscles, so for me that would be my quads, they will take over to help move the load, obviously because they are your dominant muscle, they are the stronger muscle. If you're going for a max effort load and if you're trying to push strength, you are going to favor your dominant muscle groups. So when in terms of the actual exercises themselves, I am trying to go as heavy as I can, but there are limitations with that because my main goal is mindful glute contraction. Um, and honestly, I'm still fo like, as long as you're focusing on progressive overload, aka doing more over time with regards to your lifts, then you're good to go. So each week I have been, the, the rep scheme pretty much stays the same. There's some slight tweaks in the rep scheme, um, slight increases in the rep scheme, but my main aim is to increase weight every week. So when it comes to training volume, training volume is generally seen as sets times reps times load, and that equals your training volume. So you can increase and I guess back up the thing with volume is volume is one of the main drivers of hypertrophy, one of the main drivers of growth. So gradually increasing your volume over time uh, will generally contribute to hypertrophy. Uh, the other two factors that are big contributors to hypertrophy are intensity and frequency. So the trifecta of volume, intensity, and frequency really, really drive hypertrophy. But again, uh, just gradually trying to increase training volume every week by increasing the load. So you can increase your training volume by either increasing the amount of sets you do, increasing the amount of total reps that you do, or increasing the load on the bar or the machine or the whatever. Um, or you can do a combination of those three, mixture of those three, etc. So anyway, just gradually trying to increase volume. But again, I'm not focusing on a you know squat, deadlift, strength cycle right now. Um, just because I want to focus on mindful glute contraction and making my glutes a more dominant muscle. So there will be strength cycles in the future. And also another benefit of having a hypertrophy focused cycle is to create a larger muscle that will translate over into a stronger muscle in strength cycles in the future. So it's not to say that I will never do a strength cycle again. It's just saying that right now your training does need to fluctuate. Right now my main focus is glute hypertrophy and that will translate over into future strength cycles. So, that's that. Uh, so that's kind of my reasoning there. There's a time and a place for everything and I've done strength, 
So that's that. I've done strength cycles in the past. I've definitely benefited from strength cycles in the past, but right now, what is optimal for me as an athlete and the goals that I have and the things that I'm trying to do to achieve my pro card is glute hypertrophy and focusing on glute hypertrophy in this cycle, not necessarily pursuing a new one rep max on squat or deadlift or whatever. Um, so I did not film the warm up, so I will go ahead and talk you briefly through my warm up right now. This applies to my upper body days or my lower body days. I'm currently following a um, five day split. I'm training five times per week, three days lower body, two days upper body with two full rest days. With my warm up, I do about five minutes of light cardio and then I do about 10 minutes of warming up, activation, prehab, etc. So obviously on lower body days, I'm focusing on about 10 minutes of glute activation, prehab, stretching, foam rolling, all of that. And obviously upper body days follow the same for upper body. If you guys would like separate videos for upper and lower body mobility and prehab and activation and all of that, please just let me know in the comments below. And yes, so let me make sure, let me check my notes. Okay. And then last thing that I want to share with you guys are a couple of cues that I personally use during my training sessions to get the most out of my glutes and out of the most out of my workout. So with training cues, please keep in mind that training cues, one training cue may work really well for me and it won't work at all for you. Uh, training cues are largely mental. So I've been given training cues before that don't do jack, that do jack squat for me. Basically they, they don't, click up here, so therefore they don't click in training. But I'm gonna share with you guys a couple of cues that I personally found to work on me. One of those cues that is actually one of my favorites is to spread your toes out and grip the floor. So pretend my fingers are my toes, they're still phalanges I guess, <laughs> but pretend my fingers are my toes. A lot of times in our shoes, we have the tendency to bunch up our toes and scrunch them, and that, I don't know if there's necessarily a, a scientific change like if if there's anything significant that actually happens when you do that but in my opinion that inhibits your ability to do the cue that i'm about to tell you next but so think about spreading your toes out and gripping the floor with your toes and your whole foot i don't want my toes to be bunched up in my shoes while i'm lifting i want them to be spread out i want to be able to feel my toes in the ground i want to be able to feel the ground so that is one cue and then the next cue that i personally feel like scrunching your toes messes up with is placing the majority of your weight on your midfoot and your heel. So if my toes are scrunched up, I feel like for myself personally, when my toes are scrunched up, that somewhat lifts the arch of my foot, so therefore I can't put any weight on my midfoot. Um, so a lot of times you just heal, <laughs> you just heal, you just hear the heel cue, you just he hear think heels, think heels when you're trying to activate glutes. That personally does not work for me and that does not work for a lot of athletes, uh, regard like, among a wide variety of sports just because if you are too heel oriented then you will fall backwards back when i olympic lifted being completely heel focused would have caused me to fall backwards on my pulls so thinking about displacing your weight through your midfoot and your heel area will still keep glute focus but it'll also help you maintain better balance or at least that's something that i find for myself personally so not just thinking heels 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 but thinking planting with your midfoot in your heels your midfoot is as it would describe the middle part of your foot like around the arch of your foot um, so pushing through those when you are executing these movements and then a last cue that's not really a cue but more just a mindfulness thing um, part of training is training mindfully so I had mentioned before I'm trying to develop mindful glute contraction and part of that for someone that is not glute dominant that has been quad dominant that you know experiences quads taking over very very easily I have to think glutes 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 upon contraction and we've all heard about you know the mind muscle connection when it comes to training and I definitely think that people downplay that a little bit um, they underestimate it and so especially if you struggle to activate a particular muscle really try and zone in on your mind muscle connection really try and focus on that muscle in your mind so if you're coming out of the hole on squats think glutes when i'm pushing i just did it <laughs> when i'm pushing out of the hole on squats i literally think okay glutes to get me up um when i am coming to full hip extension on something like pull throughs when i'm reaching maximal hip extension i think glutes strong contraction at the top of the movement. Um, if you're at the top of a kickback, really think glutes all the way up. So 
those were the cues that I had. Like I said, different cues work for different people. Try a couple of these out. Try, I recommend trying one cue at a time. If you try and throw too many cues at yourself, you will confuse yourself and frustrate yourself and it won't work. Let's get rolling with the voiceover. We're gonna move into some workout footage. Also, one quick note that I did wanna make. You guys will see me chopping up berries in the beginning. Uh, I, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, I have been a long time fan of training fasted and so not eating before I train because training is the first thing I do every day. Um, I find that training fasted gives me much better focus and clarity during workouts. Um, I do not train well at all if I have a meal in my stomach. It makes me very nauseous. It just makes me feel lethargic and slow, but I get a lot clearer, more focused energy if I train fasted. However, that is not optimal for growth. So I am trying to slowly introduce small carb sources. <laughs> pre-workout. Um, I've tried having a little bit more substantial, you know, something less than like half the serving of fruit, but I, my stomach can't tolerate it. I get nauseous during my workout. I have a crappy workout. Um, and I would rather have something like fruit beforehand than drink an intra-workout because I've tried intra-workouts and I'm just like, Neh. So in the beginning, I'm just chopping up some berries to take along with me to drink with my pre-workout as just a small introduction of carb sources. Again, I'm gradually trying to add more carbs in in my pre-workout meal so that's that <sighs> voiceover here we go three two one glutes. all right so here we have the commentary starting also i'm testing out my mic today so let me know how the sound quality is for you guys if you like it if you don't like it let me know in the comments so just mixing up pre-workout one scoop of alphamine two scoops of high volume and you'll see me chopping up the berries like i mentioned before um, but I will pop my discount code for PE Science up on the screen. And getting into the workout, so we're going to start with sumo block pulls. So first and foremost, sumo stance is very awkward and uncomfortable for me, um, especially coming from an Olympic lifting background. I'm used to pulling conventional. I have a 300 pound conventional deadlift max and I'm used to that style of pull. I also feel a lot stronger in that style of pull, but we are doing sumo pulls because they do have more of a glute focus than conventional. Part of why I struggle so much with the setup of sumos and just the actual movement of sumos is because my hip mobility is really, really poverty. So sumos are an even bigger struggle for me. Um, but my cues for these are to sit my hips back, uh, pack my lats, so really, really tightening my lats to keep everything nice and tight, keep core nice and tight, brace the core, um, really focus on glute contraction, using the glutes to move the weight. Um, also keeping my knees open to avoid any valgus knee action, but I also find that really hammering the cue into the ground of keeping my knees open during sumo pulls helps me to execute the pull a little bit better and thinking almost of scooping as I come to the top of the movement, you know, full, full extension. So that is sumo pulls. Again, I'm real awkward with these. I end up working up to around 145 on those. I think my sumo max is like 225 is the max I ever attempted on a sumo full deadlift. But another thing with block pulls is, I'll talk about step ups in a second, but another thing with block pulls is they are less eccentrically taxing than doing the full movement. So especially coming out of a prep and not being back to full strength yet, even though we are adding in food and cardio is done, um, I find it much better for me. Deadlifts are the most eccentrically taxing movement that you can do. Uh, so simply doing block pulls kind of removes a bit of that taxation and helps with recovery a bit more. It also allows me to do better work. So next we have these preloaded barbell step ups. So these literally always feel like cardio. I don't know why. Um, so with these, you'll notice I don't alternate sides until I complete all of the reps on one side. Um, and then also I mentioned in the previous clip the cue of pushing through midfoot and heel. Um, I definitely really focus on that when I'm doing things like step ups. Um, I focus on it a lot when I'm doing single leg work. Uh, another thing with these step ups is controlling the eccentric, so the lowering. Don't just like drop back down. Try and control the eccentric of the movement to get more out of it. Um, and then reset your working foot. So I don't take my foot completely off the bench, but I kind of lift it ever so slightly. You can't even see the lift just so that I can reset and use the midfoot and heel and the working leg and not rely on the non-working non, non foot's momentum to help me up. Um, but I also, I really love that they're, I really love doing a combination of single leg movements and, you know, both leg movements. I think it's important to do single leg work, both leg work, 
um, unilateral and both sides. I think it's important to do unilateral work is what I'm saying, whether that be with upper body or lower body. Um, everyone has imbalances. I noticed that my right glute develops a little bit easier than my left. Everyone has not only dominant muscles, but dominant sides. So doing unilateral work can help you to balance out those. So next, moving on to low bar walking lunges. These literally light a fire in your glutes and hamstrings. Like if I didn't know any better the first time I did these, I would have thought that my glute ham tie-in was an actual muscle, which it is not. Uh, but these have become one of my favorite exercises. So low bar positioning helps to put more focus on the glutes and hamstrings. You can also achieve a similar effect simply, simply by leaning forward if you're uncomfortable with a low bar setup. Uh, and then this is another one where I am aiming to push through my midfoot and my heel when I come up. Also keep the strides short on these, not super long strides like some people do with lunges, but with the low bar walking lunges, keep your strides a wee bit shorter. I definitely noticed that's one of the cues Robin puts in. I definitely noticed that that helps me to feel them more in my glutes and my hamstrings. And we're dying because it's hot in the gay yarn gym. <laughs> So next we have cable pull-throughs. These ones are a great exercise for working hip extension. So one of the main anatomical functions of the glutes are hip extension, is hip extension. With these, um, you have to be very careful when you're selecting your weight. These can throw a lot of people off balance. Um, a similar movement to these would be the hip thrust. I know Brett Contreras prefers the hip thrust to these because they allow him to move a heavier load simply because of the nature of cable pull-throughs, they can be a really awkward exercise in terms of balance. Uh, so next, moving on to the cable rope deadlifts. These are kind of a combination of a squatting and a deadlifting motion. So you do kind of almost a half squat combined with a deadlift with the rope attachment. Look at Katie just busting it over there. Get it, Katie. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, using the rope attachment, make sure you take at least five steps back from the cable machine just so that you can get a full range of motion with these. Also with these, make sure you're reaching back with your hips, not just leaning forward, because that kind of defeats the whole point if you're just leaning forward. Make sure you're leaning back with your hips. And hip, more hip extension, more cable pull-throughs. Uh, this is one exercise where I really am trying to think glutes, right there at the top, glutes. I'm doing just a slight little pause at the top to get a good contraction up there. But again, this is a, an exercise where for me especially, really thinking mind-muscle connection, really thinking glutes, glutes, glutes as I'm firing helps to maximize the effect of the movement. And another set of the cable pull-through, you know, the cable deadlifts. This was a superset, so the uh, cable pull-throughs and the cable rope deadlifts were supersetted in this workout. Um, so with hypertrophy, I'll just talk about this for a second. Most of my exercises are within an 8 to 20 rep range. It just depends on the exercise. Some have a range of 8 to 12, some have a range of 10 to 12, some have a range of 12 to 15, some have a range of 18 to 20. It just depends on the exercise and the day, but I never do anything less than 8 reps which it was a struggle for me starting out because I'm like, wow, how do I count above eight? And how do I, yeah, how do I count above anything like more than five <laughs> on squats or deadlifts uh, coming from a strength program? So moving on to cable RDLs. So these ones involve less knee bend than the rope deadlifts. Um, you're also using a bicycle bar attachment or just a bent bar attachment with a box. The box gives a little bit more ability for a full ROM, otherwise you would just hit the stack and you wouldn't get a full movement out of it to kind of defeat the purpose. But with these, again, there is less knee bend since it is an RDL type setup, as opposed to a full deadlift when you are allowed to have a little bit more knee bend in the movement. And then we have, oh my gosh, these are insane, the triple threats. So it is a single leg glute bridge, well, not single leg, it's a straight leg glute bridge combined with a bent leg glute bridge combined with a ham curl on a Swiss ball. Um, again, these are called Swiss ball triple threats. These are freaking awful. This is a great burnout exercise. Um, things like banded work and stability ball work are great for low volume glute work. They're not super taxing, but they do provide some really great glute activation. Um, so I really like these. I also like, you know, banded monster walks. Um, things with my hip circle, things like Brett's banded glute burnout, uh, things of that nature. 
And with these, just try and make sure that you are keeping your hips elevated throughout the entire movement to the best of your ability, especially on the hamstring curls. Um, with these, for in terms of reps, a uh, minimum of 10. Do you know just as many reps as possible. That's how it's programmed it is as an AMRAP. So either 10 reps or until you have just burned out. Uh, so that is the Swiss ball triple threats. Again, like I said, things with the stability ball, things with bands. So, you know, banded monster walks, banded forward backward walks, uh, forward banded abductions, banded just anything really. Anything that's not, it, it's not extremely taxing. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm terrible at voiceovers. But they're not extremely taxing on the nervous system, so you can do a lot of them without burning yourself out basically, but you're still getting a lot of really great glute contraction from those movements. So you can use them to warm up. I like to do like, you know, monster walks, side to side walks, forward backward walks as part of a warm up or you can throw them in at the end as a burnout. That's really up to you. But again, those are really great additions to a workout along with your you know, more resistance weight-based movements. And so we are wrapping up the Swiss Ball Triple Threats. Look at that logo in the background, that branding. Such nice branding. Um, this is a beautiful gym and I do feel extremely blessed and fortunate to be able to train here. Um, and with my friends, obviously the people make it what it is. So last but not least, we have machine adductions. So my adductors are a muscle group that I specifically need to target. One of my goals for this growing period was to thicken and further develop my adductors. So we add them in at the end of training sessions and that's about it. Um, here I am flexing. Hello, flex, yes. So that has been our little glute workout explanation all of that jazz oh no going in for another set i guess i can keep talking about it <laughs> so yeah since adductors are something that i specifically needed to work on we added them into programming it's at the end of my programs some days i do them by themselves like i am now and then one day throughout the week i do superset them with adductors so with these i believe today was an 8 to 10 rep day there's some days when it's a 12 to 15 rep day and some days when it's a 15 to 20 rep day it just depends all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, if you found it helpful, if you want to see more informative content, or if you just like the beauty dishes that make the lighting look all nice, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel. Also, I'm really curious, I kind of make the poor assumption that, you know, oh, everyone that follows me is a competitor, but I know that's not the case. I just don't know how many of you guys do something other than competitive bodybuilding. So leave a comment below. Let me know what your, you know, fitness of choice is. I'm just curious. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. All right, love you so much. Bye. Oh, people were not lying when they said that the beauty dish changes the game when it comes to your lighting. I feel like I don't look like this in real life, but this is real life.